Okay, welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to finish up the example we started in the previous video, which shows you numerically how to calculate the covariance matrix. In the previous video, we had already found the diagonal elements, the variance in the length, the variance in the width, and the variance in the height. Now we're trying to find the covariance, the relationship between the variation in the length, the width, and the height against the other variables. In this case, we're going to compare the variance of the length with the variance of the width, the variance of the length with the variance of the height, and the variance of the width with the variance of the height. I've already written down the equations of how to do that. We'll go over it very quickly. So here would be the variance of the length. 4.1 is the average value. 4.0 is the first reading. We multiply times the variance of the width of the same set of readings. Here, the average is 2.1, and the reading here is 2.0. Then we go to the second reading, we subtract the reading, the second reading, 4.2 from the average on the length, and we subtract the reading, 2.1 from the average of the width. Then we go to the third reading, we subtract the 3.9, the length, from the average length, and the measured width from the average width, and so forth, for all five measurements. When we multiply all that together, we add it all up, then we divide by five, there's five readings, we then get what we call the covariance between the length and the width. So in this case, that would be 0.1 times 0.1 plus, well, that would be zero because this is zero. Over here, that would be 0.2 times 0.1. Then here, that would be zero again because this term is zero. And then this term would be zero. So that's zero again, and we divide the whole thing by five and we get 0 0.06, 0 0.0, oh, two zeros, 0, 6, there we go, 6, 1,000. All right, now we do it for the second covariance, the covariance between the length and the height. Here we get 0 0.1 times, well, that would be 0, so I can go ahead and clear it out. Here, that is not 0, we get 0 0.1 times 0 0.01. We add that to... 0.2 times 0 0.04. Here we add that to 0.2 times 0 0.02. And this would be 0. Divide the whole thing by 5. And we get 0 0.0026. All right. The last one. This will be 0. This will be 0, and here we get 0 0.1 times 0 0.04. This would be 0, and we add to that plus 0 0.2 times 0 0.03. Divide the whole thing by 5, and we get 0 0.002. 0 0.002. Now let's go ahead and place those in the matrix. So the length and the width, that's this one right here, that would be 0 0.006, the covariance of the length and the height, that would be this number right here, 0 0.0026, and then we have the covariance between the width and the height, that would be this element right here, and that's going to be 0 0.002. Now what about the other elements on this side? Well, it simply would reverse the order, like this, but we would get the exact same value. So there's kind of a mirror image across the diagonal. So this element right here would also be 0 0.006. This element would be across here, 0 0.0026. And this element goes over here, 0 0.002. And now we have all nine elements in the covariance matrix. So what do we use this covariance matrix for? Remember, that represents the state covariance matrix. This is the matrix that we use to adjust the predicted state. What do we adjust it with? Well, of course, we adjust it with the Kalman gain, and the covariance matrix is used to adjust the Kalman gain, to adjust the Kalman gain between how much emphasis we place in the predicted updated state and how much emphasis we place in the, in the readings that we take of the, ex, of the variables that go into the predicted state. For example, if we're dealing with position, velocity, and acceleration, we will take measurements of those values. We will take predicted values of the next state for the position, velocity, and acceleration, and the Kalman gain will adjust how much of each we will take to then update 
the predicted value for the next state. So the covariance matrix is part of that, and later on we'll show you how to actually use that. So we go through the entire system of the Kalman gain to show you how to actually use that. At this point, we just wanted to show you how to find the values in a variance covariance matrix, or for short called a covariance matrix. Now there are some particulars about the covariance portion of the matrix, the off diagonal elements. This, those sometimes can be negative, and I'll show you an example where they will be negative and what that actually means as well. Eventually, we'll go ahead and go through the whole system and work it out from start to finish with all the various matrices to show you how to actually apply that. Matter of fact, the next example is going to be a matrix example. So instead of working out arith arithmetically, we're going to actually do it with some matrices so you can see how that actually works. Because that ultimately, when you write a program to calculate the Kalman gain, you need to use matrices Otherwise, it's very difficult to write a program to do that. So stay tuned, and I'll show you the next example.